Hello, dog lover. My name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to the live session, our weekly li live session. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are a repeat member of this uh, community and this channel, thank you for being here. Uh, in this channel, we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, uh, without the use of aversive tools like shock collars, prong collars, choke chain collars, um, force, domination, or even being alpha. Instead, we're going to use, and I'm going to encourage you to use my dog training method, which is using play and praise as a reward to your dog. We're going to learn a lot about this uh, method in this channel. I have lots of videos coming up. Um, and meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions in the chat line. And I see already there are some questions uh, lined up. And I'm going to go through those questions. Today, it's one of those days that you can ask me anything that you want. Any question that you feel that you need to know and understand, feel free to ask me. And I wanted also to expand on the idea of uh, teaching and training our dogs or puppies using play and praise. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well. And meanwhile, I just wanted to remind you to, uh, that uh, on this channel, every Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, just right now, just like now, I go live to answer your questions. And every Saturday at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will upload a video that is going to hopefully blow your mind. I have a surprise video coming up on this Saturday. Hopefully, you're going to watch and enjoy it. Um, if you could tell me if there is a good uh, sound and you can see me well, uh, give me a thumbs up or tell me in the chat line that everything is good. I will start answering your question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wonam, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. right. Wonam is saying very good, which is good. I think that's a good sign. Everything is looking good, I hope. And we have uh, Alina, Alina Car uh, Carmona. Hopefully I'm uh, pronouncing it right. It says, hi, sir. Greeting from Mexico. Hola. Thank you for being here. Uh, I don't know if this is the way, but I have a question. Alina, yes, this is the way. Go ahead and ask your question. But I think I see it. It's not the time yet. Okay, I will ask in a little bit once you start streaming. Go ahead and ask me the question. I'm going to continue with uh, Lori Terrao. Uh, I hope again I'm pronouncing it correctly. Lori has a question. Hi, sir. My name is Lori, and I'm from Town Town, Massachusetts, I'm guessing. Um, can you please tell me how to stop my 10-month-old border collie pit bull mix? Stop jumping on everyone who comes in the door. Very good question. This is one of the questions that I often get. So a pup, puppy usually, a 10-month-old puppy, has to learn the behavior of that you don't want it to jump on people. One of the problems that I see when it comes to puppies and uh, teaching them to do this or don't do that is that most of the time we allow them to jump, but the times that we don't want them to jump, uh, they, they do the behavior and we don't want them to jump, but we get upset because they're doing the behavior that previously we we were okay with it, but now we're not okay. So the first tip that I have is you can't allow your pup or puppy to jump at any situation at any time to anyone, even to you. If it's not okay with you, it's not okay with the guest. Or if it's not okay with the guest, it shouldn't be okay with you. So you shouldn't allow your puppy to jump at any time. Now, the way you're going to teach your puppy to stop jumping this behavior, uh, stop jumping on people, is what you're going to do is you're going to ask your family members, your friends, 
your anybody who is close by, you know, ask them to pretend that they're guests and they go and knock on the door or ring the bell and come in and pretend that they're guests. And then you train your puppy. Don't wait until the real thing happens, real guests come, and then you, pre you try to uh, train your puppy. That time is not the right time to train your puppy because first of all, your, your guests are not there for you to train them, train your dog and they don't want to deal with that. Second of all, you are in that state of mind that your, your guests are here and now you're getting embarrassed because your dog is jumping on them. Your puppy is also not in the training mode, is excited, is happy, is, is, uh, is excited because you know guests are, are here. So it's not the right time to train the puppy at that time. To, that's tip number two. Tip number one, uh, Correct your puppy and train your puppy uh, anytime. Stop your puppy anytime it jumps at any person, even you, your friends, your family members. You gotta stop it. Two, the the time that it happens is not the right time when the guests come. Is not the right time to train your puppy. Number three, how are you gonna stop it? You're gonna ask your puppy when you're pretending that your friends or family members are guests. When, you're, when your puppy puts the paws up, instead of pulling your, instead of pulling your puppy, here's a, a demo dog, instead of pulling your puppy back, right, the way you're gonna do is you're gonna pull to the side. So what, you, what you're gonna do, your puppy is jumping on people, instead of doing this, which you're gonna hurt and damage your dog's dog physically, you're going to pull the leash to the side. You're going to bring it to you. You're going to say, yes, good boy or good girl. You know, you tell your puppy that this is what I want you to do. Not that. Don't want you to jump on people. I want you to focus on me. You got to do this when you're calm, relaxed, and your friends and family are having fun. You know, it's training session. It's not really uh, guests are there, right? You're... You're doing this, you're repeating this uh, behavior maybe 10 times instead of pulling back. You can even use a harness. Instead of pulling back, you can pull the leash to the side and bring your puppy towards you. So instead of doing your puppy going towards the guest, you're making the dog face you. This teaches your puppy that if I jump on people, my uh, punishment in a way or the way my owner is going to correct me is going to make me face the owner. So once the puppy faces you, you're going to say uh, no. And as soon as your puppy faces you, say good boy or good girl. Okay. So praise your puppy. So you repeat that 10, 20 times your 21st time your puppy has some idea okay i'm not supposed to jump apparently i'm not supposed to jump instead i'm supposed to do this now meanwhile if you could teach your puppy to sit instead of jumping to replace the behavior of jumping with the sit that's even better but if you repeat that 10 20 times the 21st time your puppy has some clues, some ideas of what you're, what is supposed to do, and you, you will have an easier time to correct your puppy when the real guests come. So, I have a video on my channel. If you go to my channel, uh, there is a, a search icon. Uh, type in there, jumping and it will give you results of the videos that I have about jumping. I think the first one is the one that you're gonna need to watch. So I have a video there as well that you can watch. Actually, let me see if I can get the link to that video and paste it in the, um, in the chat line. Uh, just give me a minute, I will f uh, figure it out. Uh, thank you for everybody for being here. I see that there are lots of questions. I will try to answer them all. Uh, Wonam is also here. He says, hello, Saro. I love your channel. Thank you. Thank
thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I work really hard to create this channel, and is is getting uh, is getting known, and is getting there, and is growing, and it's wonderful to see that. So let me just get the link for the jumping video that I suggest you to go ahead and watch. Um, So I'll get the link and you can go ahead and watch this video later on. And everybody actually, if you have a dog who's jumping on people and guests and all that, you can definitely uh, benefit from this video. I'm gonna put it in the chat line, jumping video. Stop jumping video. It's in the chat line now. There we go. Okay. So, one am, uh, where was I? Yes, one am. Uh, I love your channel. I walk my dog to the dog park, but every time she sees a dog, she is uncon uncontrollable and doesn't come back to me. How do I make her come to me no matter what? Great question. Uh, I'm assuming you have your dog off leash. She's off leash, right? So one of the things is that if you have a dog off leash and your off leash dog, she doesn't listen to you when you call it, that's a sign that that dog is not ready to be off leash. Most dog owners, they rush and they go too fast to off leash their dog. I know you want to give that freedom to your dog. Uh, you want her to enjoy running around, playing with other dogs, having fun. But you have to face the reality. Face the reality, what I mean by that is you have to understand that some dogs learn faster than the others. And some dogs, when they learn, then they can benefit from being off leash. Once they have learned what the rules of off leash, being off leash is, then you can off leash your dog, but you have to teach them to be off leash. You can't just fast forward and go from this, having a dog and off leashing a dog. There is a process that you have to go through. Your dog has to go through. You have to teach your dog. The process is you start training your dog on a uh, four to six foot leash, walking your dog, master the walk, get a good result, 100% results on a leash. And then you start extending the leash to 10 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, 16, 18, 20, up to 35 feet. You extend the leash. You extend the leash to be attached to your dog, but you're holding the end of the leash, but your dog is kind of um, off leash, but it's under control. If something happens and doesn't come to you, you can pull the uh, leash to you, to, towards you and get your dog to you. But between, let's say, the six foot leash and 35 foot leash, that's a good time for you to measure whether your dog is ready to be off leash. Let's say if you have her on a 10 foot leash and you're saying Rover come and Rover doesn't come, that means she's not ready to be off leash yet. So you have to go back to six foot leash. When you go to 12 feet or 15 feet and you, off, you ask your dog to come and she comes, you say, wow, she came. That means she's ready to go to the next uh, level, which is 20 feet maybe. Try that. Once you go through that, once you go through the process of teaching the dog that you can't just go and do whatever you want without my permission, first of all, and once I call you or ask you to do this and that. If you don't do it, then I'm going to recall you and get you back over here. Once you do that, let's say within three months or six months, your dog is going to learn. And one of the things that I always say to dog owners is that um, once you off-leash your dog, if you off-leash your dog and your dog takes off, that means that dog is not ready to be off leash. So what that means is you have to work on this uh, to go from six, six foot leash to uh, 15 feet, 20, 25, 30, 35, and then off leash. So you, this takes about 
six months to a year. So try to focus on that training and don't feel bad that you're not off-leashing your dog. Emotions shouldn't be controlling the right to do the right things. You know, your dog's safety is number one. If your dog, let's say there's a coyote or there is a bear or there's a man with a knife standing over there 20 feet from you and your dog is running towards that subject and you're asking your dog to come to you because you want to save your life and your dog chooses not to come, then that's a regret that you're never ever going to forget, right? Because safety should be number one. Emotions that I want to have that feeling of uh, releasing and re giving this freedom to my dog should be the last thing, right? So I hope that makes sense. And that's a reality. You know, many dog owners, they don't focus on that. They don't focus on uh, facing the reality and going through the process of training their dogs. Instead, they go with their emotions and let emotions make decisions, which is the worst thing that you can do. Thank you for the question. Next, we have Fatima Altamirano. Beautiful name. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hello, I have a German short hair, hair pointer and she has so much energy all the time. How do I get her to stop play biting or biting when she gets excited? We tried giving her a toy to bite on instead. There are a few things happening here. One, one you have a dog, a breed who's high energy dog, German short hair pointer, right? That's a high breed, high energy breed. Two, you have, um, the problem with this is, let's say you have a high energy dog. It doesn't mean that you have to constantly offer them um, high energy activities. Instead, with high energy dogs, you have to do, to do the opposite. You have to practice calmness. That's the problem with most dog owners who have high energy breeds. They say, oh, I have a high energy breed, so I have to exercise this demon like, uh, like demon. You know, exercise this dog like demon, like every, every day, three, four hours, I have to exercise it. When you do that, your dog learns that has to always go, 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 instead of slowing down. Because one day, let's say when they're older, they have to slow down and you're, they're gonna have a hard time slowing down. Or pretend one day they get injured or they, you have to do some surgery on your dog, you have to do something, right, with your dog. And your dog has to be calm. You won't be able to calm them down. If you constantly provide high energy activities, they will give you high energy um, back. So instead of providing this game, that game, let's do this, let's do that, try to teach your puppy to just sit and stay. So a couple of things that I, would, can, I can suggest is teach your uh, dog sit and stay. Sit and stays are commands that teaches the dog to calm down to relax. Instead of go, 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 they focus on the task of sitting and staying. They have, their job is now mental rather than being physical. So you can teach your dog sit, stay, and also wait as well. So let's pretend that your dog one day gets injured, something happens that they have to be calm. You can tell your dog sit, stay, or wait. So they know what to do. So these are these are the things that you have to focus on. I hope I hope I'm making sense. Uh, let me know if I'm making sense. Focus on creating calm activities. I'm not saying don't exercise your dog or puppy. What I'm saying is, if you're providing, let's say, an hour of exercise, provide an hour of uh, calmness as well. So your dog learns both, learns to be calm and to get excited. So I can get my dog going, I can get my dog to calm down 
in this instant, right? So practice on those. I hope that makes sense. And then we have Lori Terrell. Yes, uh, could you please tell me how to stop my border collie from jumping on everyone who they walk in the door? He gets so excited that uh, he scratches and nips everyone. So yeah, um, let me see. Uh, I think I answered this question. Yes. Yes, yeah, so there is a link, uh, Lori. Um, let me see, am I missing something here? So there is a link of a video that I shared. Uh, please watch that video, and I think I explained. Um, Barev Saro, oh, Susie Valentine Realtor says Barev Saro. That uh, in Armenian says means hello, Barev in Chpeses. Uh, I am Armenian, uh, my background is Armenian, so it's great to see Armenian from everywhere. Uh, so far I've seen Mexico and uh, uh, US, and um, Susie, uh, where are you from? I'm guessing you're from US too. Uh, it's great to have everybody from everywhere in the channel. So Kat um, Cedarberg, um, Hope I'm guessing. I'm guessing Cedarberg. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hi, Saro. Hello. Uh, how can I train my dog to go potty in a new area than he used to? Also, it's uh, astro turf instead of grass. Grass. Okay. How can I train my dog to go potty in a new area than he used to? Okay. So what you have to do is dedicate a weekend to train your uh, dog. I'm guessing is an adult dog now. It's not a puppy anymore, but whatever. Um, dedicate the weekend to train this to your puppy. So what are you gonna do every two hours? You're gonna put the leash on your dog. You're gonna hold on to your dog for the whole week. So uh, you're gonna, let me remove this so you can see. So you're going to get the leash and you're going to put the leash around your waist. Okay. And you're going to attach the end of it to your dog. Okay. You're going to attach the end of it to your dog. And you're going to do everything that you do throughout the weekend with your dog. So your dog is completely under your control. What that means is your dog is doing everything that you're asking it to do and going with you. So this way you have complete control over the physical activity of your dog. So if your dog has to pee or poo, has to let you know somehow, right? As it's attached to you. So you're gonna take your dog every two hours to that spot and you're gonna wait there on that turf, uh, on your grass, AstroTurf, you're gonna stand there, you're gonna wait there for three, five minutes. And if your pup, your, if your dog does it, you praise it, you say, good boy, good girl, right? Uh, praise it. If it doesn't, move away, come back in an hour or two. Every two hours you do this, right? Overnight, you possibly, if possible, put it in a crate so it doesn't go and do its business somewhere else. Um, I prefer, uh, that's the way you're gonna train your dog to do its business on that turf. Uh, but I prefer dogs doing their business outside of the house. Um, so basically what I suggest you to do is every few, every few hours, take your dog outside and walk it for five, 10 minutes, let it do its business, come back home. That's the easiest way. Hopefully that will help and solve that solution. If you have follow-up questions, feel free to ask. We have Sandra R. I don't crate train. How can I encourage from peeing inside? They have doggy door. So this is a good question. Follow-up to the question, the previous question. 
what so what what happens when you uh, train your puppy or dog to do the, this business inside is what happens is they start um, getting used to doing their business but most of the time the reason they do their business inside they pee inside is because they are communicating to you uh, I think that's what the question is uh, don't create train. How can I encourage from peeing inside? They have a doggy door, so you want it to go outside. If they're doing their business inside of the house, the reason main main reason they do it is communicating to you. The reason they do it, the reason they're communicating that way with you because they can't really tell you how they feel, but there is something going on in your family or in their state of mind that is bothering them. It's something that has stressed them out, something that is causing them anxiety. Uh, something has changed, probably. Uh, something has, some. either you have brought something new in the house or you have moved away something from the house. Maybe somebody moved in, maybe somebody moved out. It could be many, many reasons. Something cha has changed in the house uh in the house uh how in the in the house and they are this is sign that your dog is sensitive and he is telling you that this change is bothering me so most dogs they don't want to do their business inside if a dog is doing their business inside, that's a sign that they are stressed and they are communicating it to you. So pay attention, listen, and figure out what is uh, causing it, them to, causing, causing her to get stressed or anxious. Uh, fix that up. You'll see that the ping is going to fade out. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me see. We have Alicia Animal Crazy. Alicia Animal Crazy. Thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you. I really appreciate for being here and taking your time to come here and uh, spending the evening with me and asking your questions. Um, when am I there? Am I? Okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask the question in the chat line and I will definitely answer them. Hey, Sarah, I just got a puppy. He's been really good, but do you know any tips about sleeping and when it's time to go to bed? Of course I do. <laughs> um, I suggest dog owners to know these puppy owners. I want you to know that puppy owners should let their puppy to sleep 16 to 18 hours a day. Yes, 16 to 18 hours a day, they have to be sleeping. If they don't sleep, it causes them to develop health issues in future. That's the time that they grow, they repair their system, their body repairs. Uh, that's when they learn and cleanse um, internally. So it's very beneficial for them to sleep. Uh, this is why you have to learn to exercise your puppy four times a day. Uh, I would say 15 minutes to 20 minutes at a time. Some puppies need a little bit more, some puppies need a little less, but break it down to four sessions, four, five, six sessions of short plays. Play and let your puppy go in a crate and sleep or go in a bed and sleep. Uh, if you're working inside in, the, in, in your office, put the bed by your side, put the crate by your side, let them sleep beside you so they feel you and sense you and they will sleep, they will relax and sleep. And then they will sleep for an hour or two, they will wake up, then you let them play, you play, let them play with other dogs, take them for a walk, things like that. Uh, for 15 minutes, relax again. If you see that your puppy is uh, needing more activities, what you can do, you can offer them toys, chew toys, and things like that. Definitely make sure to watch my video on Saturday. 
you're gonna love it. You're gonna see things and you're gonna see a video that I've been really holding on to share. So I want you to watch the video on Saturday. You're gonna get a lot out of it. The other thing is uh, let your puppy sleep, uh, you know, at the same time that you go to sleep. For the next while, since you have a puppy, I suggest you to change your activities, change your um, lifestyle. Uh, you're taking a care of a puppy, you're taking care of a baby. So stay home, go to sleep early, put the crate by your bed so your puppy can see you and smell you and feel you. So it will feel more relaxed. Go to sleep early, let them sleep throughout the night. If they need to go for a potty, get up and take them for a potty. So longer night sleeps for both you and the dog. Therefore, if they wake up throughout the night, you're not really lacking sleep. Uh, let's say you go to sleep nine o'clock, eight, nine o'clock, your puppy goes with you at eight, then nine, you know, 12 o'clock, puppy is gonna wake up, you're gonna wake up, let it out, do its business, come back to sleep. You're going to sleep out, uh, until 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So you have enough time to catch up to your sleep and the puppy has enough time to sleep. So yeah, definitely watch my video on Saturday. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Lori Terra, thank you so, so much, Saro. I'm definitely going to watch the video and try what you said also. Great, thank you. Um, we have Jessica Watt is saying hi. Hi, Jessica, thank you for being here. Uh, we have um, Hogtastic Hog Ent, ENT. Hoping I'm pronouncing it properly. Uh, these are hard ones. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm gonna call you, call you Hog, if you don't mind. Hog uh, saying hello, Saro. Hello, how can I teach my down to stop jumping, my dog to stop jumping on people also? I just had a newborn baby. Any tips for me with the dog? Okay, so for uh, stopping your um, dog to jump on people, I just shared a video. There's a link in the chat line, uh, which it says stop jumping video watch that video please and as a dad new dad and you and you have a newborn baby by the way congratulations that is exciting to have a baby and a dog wow you must be going crazy but there is a way to <laughs> create balance and calmness so one of the things that i want you to do is now many trainers and many people will think oh this is not the right thing this is too much but I don't want you to mix your dog with your baby. Not yet. Not until you have 100% control over your dog, then you can kind of let your pup dog to get involved with the puppy. The reason for that is, again, safety. Safety is the key here. We want your baby to be safe, and if we want your dog to be safe, You, want, I want you to also be safe as well. You don't want you to deal with uh, stories that you read in the, in the the news that you know the dog attacks the baby and things like that. Many people get relaxed; they forget that dogs have teeth and they express their feelings and their uh, emotions with their bite, with their you know mouth. That's how they express themselves. Um, some give warning, some don't. Some growl and some bark, and some just go for it. I don't know how your dog is, which type it is, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So you don't want to mix your baby with your dog. It doesn't matter you know, how bad you feel again, that, oh, I'm not mixing my dog with my baby. Don't feel bad. You work, you have to, I know it's busy. Everything is, you know, having a baby and having a dog, it's too much. But you have to spend some time with your dog to make your dog to be 100% under control, which is going to take months, years. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You take the time 
uh, as much as you can, you invest in time to work with your dog, to have 100% control over your dog, and then feel free and comfortable to um, mix it with the baby. Don't feel bad. Don't let emotions make decisions. When humans make decisions with their emotions, most of the time they make the wrong choices. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Wolam uh, says, Thank, thanks for the help. I just wanted you to put more advertisement into your videos so I can help this channel while watching your helpful videos. Wow, that's, thank you very much, Th thank you. Uh, that is, that really means a lot. Um, I do this, you know, um, one is my passion. I do this channel because I love dogs and I love sharing information with dog owners. And I love to teach, you know, I'm a teacher in a way. Um, so that comes first for me. And if there is reward out of that, I'll take it. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, please, please, everybody, including um, one of Please share this video, share this channel with every dog owner that you know. Let this channel grow as fast as it can uh, because it's very important, you know, for dog owners to become educated dog lovers. You know, everybody loves dogs, which is great, but we need to, uh, to have educated dog lovers. And my task and my uh, mission is to help you to become an educated dog lovers when you become an educated dog lover, you make the right choices, you benefit, your dog blossoms, benefits, and becomes the best dog in the world. So thank you for your support, and please share this channel. Uh, where are we? Okay, here we go. Uh, hog. I'm going to call you Hog. Hog says, you just answered my question. So any any tip for me and my newborn? He's nine months pit. He listens a little bit, but I want him to know I have a baby. So you, you see, he's a nine-month-old uh, pit. Wonderful, right? Um, you're saying he listens a little bit. So you have to make sure that he listens 100%. So the way you do that is every day you put 15 minutes aside away from your newborn baby, away from your wife, or away from everything in your life. Put Shut down on everything and say for 15 minutes, I'm going to focus on my pet, on my dog. Okay, Dedicate 15 minutes a day. It's possible. 15 minutes, anybody can do it. Anybody can dedicate 15 minutes. I can do it. Everybody can do it. You have to dedicate 15 minutes a day and work with your dog. Work on sit, stay, come. Sit, stay, come. These three commands, sit, stay, come, are commands that are going to save your life, save your dog. Start with those. Uh, if you want to know uh, how you can um, teach those to your uh dog, sit, stay, and all that. I want to share a link uh, in the in the chat line. Let me get the link. You can start, um, start by watching these videos. Teach the basic obedience commands. So watch these videos. Hold on. Um, and start working for 15 minutes every day with your dog, with your puppy. Dedicate 15 minutes a day. You're, after, I would say, six months, your pet, your dog, your puppy is going to be the best dog. Then it's going to listen to you 100%. Maybe 99%, not 100%, but it's better than what it is now. So don't rush, take your time, spend and invest time to work with your dog and train your dog. Watch the videos, each video teaches you one command, work on each command for 15 minutes a day for a few weeks 
and then go to the next command. Teach your next command to your dog. Work with your puppy for a few weeks and then go to the next command, on and on. That will take you three months, six months, whatever it takes. Work on with, with your puppy. After a few months, if you feel confident and you feel comfortable, you can, and you see that your dog is listening to you 100%, 99%, then you can kind of uh, mix it with the baby. The one more tip that I have is, I hope you have a room for the baby. That room is, the dog is not allowed to get in. The dog, is also the baby is always out of reach of the dog. If you see your dog is jumping while you're holding the baby, and your dog is jumping, no, you're not going to say hi to the baby with that attitude, with that energy. The dog has to be calm as a cucumber to meet the dog, the, the newborn baby. Okay? To meet and interact with the baby, the dog has to be cool, calm, under control. All right? Hopefully that helped. Uh, Tonya Lambert is asking, my service dog has a problem with wanting to smell every flower and bush. How can I stop this? You see, I'm a dog trainer and I deal with dogs every day. I love dogs. You take away dogs from me, I will get stressed. I won't have fun. Life would be miserable for me. Life would be horrible. I would get frustrated if I, ha I don't have dog or I don't work with dogs. Now, if you take away sniffing away from dog, that's what's going to happen to your dog. It's going to be miserable. It's going to be horrible. It's not going to have a good time. Most dogs especially young ones, and I think, I'm guessing, Tanya, that you have a puppy that you're training it to become a service dog. A puppy is in that mode, in that zone, that is exploring the world, especially young ones. They are still exploring the world. world. They are getting to know everything. They are getting familiar with things, smells, textures, uh, sounds fields, all these things. So you have to yet let that puppy to explore. If you, if you stop it from exploring, it will become and it will help to develop behavioral issues in future. So for now, let the puppy do that. Let the dog through, go through uh, that process of sniffing and sniffing every inch. If, if it takes you to go from here to here, five minutes, you take that time, okay? So the other tip that I have is, with, especially with dogs who are sniffy dogs, if you have a dog who's sniffy dog, let's say you want to, you say, okay, I have 30 minutes to go for a walk with my dog, right? So what I would suggest is let 15 minutes the dog do whatever it wants, and then the other 15 minutes, ask the dog to do what you want. First, give the dog do whatever it wants. Give and then receive. So 15 minutes give, 15 minutes receive. And the way you're going to ask your dog to um, stop sniffing, you're going to teach your dog the heel command. Heel command. The heel command, I'm going to share the link for this video, uh, heel command. Uh, you can teach the heel command, which teaches the dog to have its head up instead of down. So it teaches the dog to walk upright and walk by the heel owner like that, right? Instead of doing whatever. So you want the dog to stay up and walk like that. It takes time, but you can teach the dog the heel command and it will learn. I had two beagles. I have two beagles. I had um, 
Jonah. I had Jonah passed away a few years ago. I have Harvey. And I have taught him that. So he knows, okay, I go to sniff mode. But if I say uh, Robert Hill, I, I'm, I don't want to say his name is over there sleeping. If I say his name, Hill, he starts walking like that. He, his head automatically goes up. So that's what you can do. You can teach the dog to heal. But I want you to understand, don't take away, first of all, the the opportunity for the puppy or the dog to experience life. And second of all, that's a very joyful activity for the dog. It's the best thing. You know, one of the best things and best activities dogs can do is sniffing. You know, scent dogs, especially scent animals, scent dogs, the, the best, that's the best thing you can give them to do. Uh, and also it's very beneficial because if you allow a dog to sniff for 15 minutes, it's equal to hiking them for an hour. That's how important it is. If you allow a dog to sniff for 15 minutes, it's equal to hiking them off leash or on leash for an hour. It's that much powerful. So don't take away that from the dog or the puppy. We have Cat Cedarberg. Thank you, Sorrow. My dog currently goes in the front yard, but it is destroying our grass. We only have a briquette fence in the courtyard. Uh, I'm trying to retrain him to use AstroTurf in the courtyard. Yes, so, um, so if your dog is going in that spot, you can just simply switch the spot. Keep your dog on leash for two days and just take it where you want it to do. You, I'm sure, I'm saying two days, but I'm sure within a day they can learn. Dogs are smart enough to figure things out, okay? Pastor Oris, uh, Pastor Oris is saying, thank you, thanks for your all your help. You are very welcome. Thank you for being here. And Pastor Oris is saying, I have a two-year-old GSD, German short-term uh, pointer dog, that is always running out of house. As soon as he sees an opportunity, he runs towards the door and knocks my wife over so he can escape. Uh, what can I do to fix this? I have a video that I have done about this topic. I'm going to share the link in the in the chat line. I just did it recently too. Uh, let me see if I can get the link. Uh, I'm sure I did it recently. Um, but it's, it's very simple actually. You know, one of the reasons dogs um, run out of uh, the door, it, it's a sign that that dog is uh, not stimulated enough. Okay, got it. So I'm gonna share the link for this video that I have physically, uh, actually explained it. Uh, running out of doors. Uh, I'm going to share that. Yeah, go ahead and watch that. But meanwhile, understand the reason a dog takes off the door is because it's telling you that it's lacking uh, physical and mental stimulation. A dog, in general, needs five daily essential needs. Do you know what those um, five essential needs are? Um, your dog has daily five essential needs that you need to provide them. Do you know what they are? If you don't know, here's a, a recap. It's exercise, training, socialization, care, and also affection. Exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. You have to provide these um, for your dog to be happy, to be satisfied, so when it it's an opportunity like that. First of all, it doesn't have the energy to run out. And second of all, it doesn't have the uh, will to run out because you have provided all that it needs, okay? So exercise, you need to provide a GSD. You have to provide at least an hour of exercise, at least. So I would break it down 
you know, to two half an hour a day uh, of exercise, one half an hour in the morning, one half an hour in the evening. If you could, 45 minutes, 45 minutes. GSTs, they need a little bit more activity than regular dogs. Training, you have to train your dog. Sit, stay, wait. If you, if you have a dog that you have taught to stay, if the door is open, it doesn't matter what uh, if the door is open or closed. You have to ask your dog to stay. Your dog is going to follow the stay command. So you have to teach your dog, train your dog, uh, you know, commands to follow through. Uh, socialization, the third thing a dog needs, exercise training, socialization. Your dog needs to go and, you know, sniff, smell the roses just as uh, we, uh, we were talking about, has to go and say hi to people, to dogs and uh, environments and situations. That's socialization. If they get enough of that socialization, they get satisfied. They're happy. Next thing, they need care, which you provide the best care for your dog. I'm guaranteeing that. And last thing they need is affection. Affection is not the first thing a dog needs. It's the last thing, but they still need affection. So you have to provide exercise, training, socialization, care, and also affection. If you provide these, your dog is not going to run out of the doors. That's the solution. <laughs> um, where are we? Okay. Um, I lost. Okay, got it. Um, Emilio N. Emilio, thank you for being here. My dog hates crate, absolutely refuses to go in, even hides from us when we try to get him to go in. I tried the treats method and he's just too smart to go in. The problem with tra crate training is that, first of all, you have to start when they are very, very young. When they are, you know, as soon as you bring them home, have, you have to start teaching them to be going in the crate, be comfortable being in the crate. Second of all, there are dogs, uh, you know, in a way we have this uh, understanding that dogs are den animals. They are kind of den animals, but some of the dogs due to uh, breeding, they have lost that notion of being a den dog. Some have it, some don't. So if your dog is showing, uh, not showing interest in the, in the crate, that means it's not a den dog. You can't force a dog to become a den dog. Uh, the only thing that you can do is start slow. Every day, put your, you know, put, uh, not put, but you don't, I don't want you to force your dog, but kind of encourage whatever you can come up with to encourage, put, Put a, a piece of chicken, a good tasty chicken at the end of the crate. Let your dog go in, stay there for 10 seconds, let it eat, come out. Next day, try to make it 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It's, it's going to be a slow process to teach a dog to like the crate. And also, the other thing I would suggest is maybe get a bigger crate and get those crates that are fenced. Um, you know, they're not boxed, but they're, um, I forgot what they're called. They're fenced, uh, kind of like, you know, let me see if I have one, can't move now. But uh, one of those fence that has, um, it's uh, see-through, you can't see it. So the dog can see, start with that. And if you see your dog is getting comfortable with that crate, then you can cover it with towels or uh, sheets and things like that. Then it becomes more in, uh, inclusive uh, for and more crate-like. So try these tips. Um, I also have a video about crate. I'm going to share that um, video as well. Which, he, which I uh, explain a little bit more about crate training and things like that, uh, which I'm going to share on the chat line. It's called crate training. Anybody who is interested in learning how to crate train their dog, there is the video. It, it is in the chat line. Emily, Emilio, hopefully that answered your question. 
Uh, also, I think he may have suppression anxiety. How can I get him to go in without any fuss? Yeah, I just I just talked about it. So having separation anxiety and yes, it could be the cause also, one of the reasons why it doesn't want to go inside the crate, but mainly is because it, it's not a den dog. That's one of the main reason I believe it is. But if it's feeling separation anxiety, you know, you want to make sure that that crate is right by you. You're sitting beside it for five minutes, 10 minutes while your dog is in there, while you're training. And then, you know, take time, take, you know, a month, three months, even six months to train your dog, but go slow, take the time. It will happen eventually, but you have to take the time. Uh, da, da, Davo Jane, Devo Jane, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. When should I start training my three months old GST puppy? Oh, we got lots of GST puppies today. It's a GST day. All right. Uh, you want to start training your puppy as soon as it turns four to six months old. Four to six months old is the sweet spot to start formally training a puppy. Before that, it's a little bit too early. Uh, GSTs, yeah, I would say four months is a good time to start. Five months is even better uh, because they're developing. They're still, you know, they're still learning uh, to, ex to experience life. They're learning uh, what is going on. Their hearing is completely developed. Their uh, nose is developed. Their eyesight is completely developed when they are about four to five months. Then you can start formal training. Before that, what happens when you focus, start training them formal training? They, they look, lack focus because they're distracted with all the things. You know, a pup, you take a puppy outside, is like, you know, they can't focus on one thing. Everything is like new. What, what was that? You know, so with that mindset, you can't train a puppy. You will regret doing it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more work, actually, if you start training your puppy at that age. So what you want to do is wait a little bit, wait until they're four months, five months, a little bit ready, developed, and then get started on training. Uh, we get extension 214. How do I calm my eight month American bully? He seems to be full of energy when around my older dog, GSD, another GSD. He won't stop bothering him. So we have an eight months old and an older dog. An older dog, I would guess it's maybe five, five years and older. So the problem is most adult uh, older dogs, they don't like puppy energy. Puppy energy is annoying. It's just too much. They don't like it. They don't enjoy it. Uh, so instead, what I want you to do is, even though you're, maybe they get along, but adults, they need, let's say, 20 minutes of play, whereas puppy needs half an hour, 45 minutes of play. So the energy levels don't match usually. So to not bother your adult dog and also to satisfy your puppy, what I suggest you to do is focus on taking your puppy, eight months old puppy to the park and let your puppy dog park to play with other dogs. You can send your puppy to doggy daycare once or twice a week, let the puppy play with dog, other dogs. You can hire, um, uh, dog walkers to take them for a walk so they can get stimulated with other dogs, things like that. So don't um, focus on your older dog to puppy sit, babysit. Uh, that's not the right choice. Uh, you want to make sure that your puppy is getting involved with dogs or puppies on its own, uh, on, uh, equal to his energy, and it's uh, having a good time with them rather than with annoying your older dog. 
Um, also, suggest you to watch um, uh, my video, new video on Saturday. It will help you a lot. Um, we have Bees Trends Marketing saying, great job, Saro. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I really enjoy what I do, and I appreciate your uh, um, feedback. So we got that. We have Tonya Lambert. My service dog has a problem loading into the car if it's a new car. He hasn't been in before uh, because he fell out while loading up into a van last year. How do I help him get over this fear he has? Usually, it's when it comes to situations like this, it's not that your puppy is afraid of the, the car. It's the experience that it had with you. Uh, so it's not remembering that, oh, I had a bad experience with cars and I'm, I should respond to it. Uh, usually, unless your puppy was really young, let's say it was, was it younger than six months? If it was then, if it was, then it should, yeah, it ha it will remember. But but usually they don't really focus on that. They focus on what you offer at that moment. Uh, you know, the car is different. The every uh, the experience is different. So you have to understand this and in your mind what i want you to do is not to focus on previous experience don't think that oh in last time in that car this happened i hope this time uh, um, she or he is going to be okay you know what i mean he 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 is going to be okay so I want you to be in positive mode. I want you to be in uh, focused mode on the experience of now. Be in the moment, be in that now moment uh, rather than the previous moment, okay? And play with your puppy. Play before you take it to the park. Play with your puppy uh, the day before, a few days before. Play with your puppy and the day before play with your puppy, and on five minutes before going to the car, play with your puppy uh, and be in a positive energy, Be let your puppy to be in a positive energy, and then take that energy to the car. Think positive, give positiveness, and then move forward, okay? I think that will help. Um, okay. Kyla Seder saying, I just got a new dog. He's five months. He's going to be an alert, alert service dog. How should I train him to be out in public? It's, you have to focus on uh, socialization. So every dog, I want you to focus on this. Um, and also understand every dog, puppies including, they you need to focus on providing their daily five essential needs. Exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So what we are focused now is being in the public, which is socialization, number three, right? But we have to have a good one and two in order to benefit number three. Uh, so what I mean by that, if you want, for example, your dog to focus on you when you're training your dog, you have to exercise your dog. If you don't exercise your dog, you're not going to have a good result in training. And if you don't exercise your dog and don't provide good training, you're not going to have good socialization results, right? So let me see if I can do this. Hold on a second. Right. I'm still building my, okay, I'm going to remove your question so we can focus on this. Okay, let me see if I can do this so I can explain to you a little bit more. Sorry about this, I wasn't prepared for this. 
but we have to get it done. So, hopefully you can see it. So, exercise. It's not visible. I don't know if we could do that. I, I wasn't prepared uh, for this exercise, training, socialization, care, affliction. Harden the, the system. I'm still working on the set. But this is what we are trying to focus on, okay? Exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So this connects to this, this connects to this, this happens, and then that happens. So if you don't have a good exercise, your training is not going to get uh, improved. And if you don't have a good training, you can't uh, help your dog to socialize with um, everything else. And if you don't do this, your dog is not going to benefit or enjoy care. Care is, for example, uh, food. Okay, food. If you don't provide exercise, training, socialization, your dog is not going to really enjoy the food. It's going to eat it, but if you provide these things, he's going to he or she is going to really enjoy the food. And then when you share affection, your dog actually. Um, benefits from that affection because you have provided everything else. But most dog owners, what they do is they go backwards. They start with affection and then food, uh, a little bit of socialization, some training, and a lot of exercise maybe. They do it the opposite way. You have to do it that way. If you do it in a proper way, exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection, your socialization is going to improve. So focus on your question was how do I get your how do you get your puppy to be a good service dog to be in public? So socialization is the key here, but you're going to have to focus on exercise and training so you can good, do a good uh, get good results of socialization. So here's an example. If I exercise my dog properly and it gets enough exercise, it's happy. I'm going to ask, now I'm going to focus on training. I'm going to say, Rover, sit, stay. And Rover, now because has exercised, can focus on me and focus on the training, so he's going to sit and stay. He's going to listen. And then if I meet somebody, I'm going to say, Rover, sit and stay while I'm, we're meeting this person. Right. So my dog is following through because I've done good exercise and training, now it's socializing with people. I can teach my dog and control my dog to socialize. Make sense? And once we, do, we did that, we can ask our dog um, to enjoy the food, care, right? And we can use affection as a reward for exercise and training and all that. I talk about this formula. I have a course on my website, which you can go and um, learn. Um, it's basically sorrowdogtraining.com. Go ahead and find out the courses. I have a course there. You can go ahead and register and learn more details about that. I, and I hope that explains and made sense. Um, we have Dual, uh, Dual Jane, how to have eye contact without training, without treats. <laughs> uh, good question. Um, how do you have eye contact? First of all, you don't really need to have eye contact with the dog in order to have control over the dog. Uh, your dog can hear you and see you. So one of the things that, one of the amazing things about dogs is that if a dog is standing, let's say, in this position, they can see you. If you're there, they can see you. As a human being, we can't. 
but dogs can. So they don't really have to have eye contact with you in order to say, my dog is listening to me. But eye contact, eventually it will develop. If you work with your dog, if you, as you start training, you train, your, train to train your dog, your dog is gonna learn that, oh, this person is actually trying to make contact with me, right? So it's not looking at me at all. So I'm training my dog. After one week, this is what I'm gonna get. After two weeks, maybe I'm gonna get this. After a month, this is what I'm gonna get. If I work with my dog, does it make sense? The first few weeks or months, you, should, you shouldn't have any expectations from your dog to look at you because you are in a way nothing to the dog. You're building that relationship, you're building communication. When you start training your dog, your dog starts connecting with you and builds that relationship that feels comfortable to look at you. They will automatically make on eye contact throughout uh, training, throughout connection, throughout you taking the time to work with your dog. And, you know, in treat training, you're you're bribing your dog to look at you. You're saying, if you look at me and make eye contact, here's what you're gonna get. You're kind of buying that eye contact. You're not building it. Am I making sense? Building a relationship with the dog is, is, a, is a process. It's the, the process that you take to build that. If you're shortcutting and you're getting results today without doing and working hard to begin that relationship, the results are going to be that in future, your dog is not going to be connected to you. I have many clients and I, for example, today I had a client who said, uh, my I, I noticed that the dog was shy so I said, is, is, it, is your dog usually shy with people? She goes, yeah. Uh, I said, the reality is if your dog is shy with people, that means it's not trusting humans. And you, as a dog owner, you have to be a great example for a dog to trust humans. And if a dog doesn't trust me, a stranger, that means it doesn't trust you. Even though the dog is living with you, it's you're feeding it, you're taking care of it, you're doing all the things, but it doesn't really trust you. And that's the thing, that's the key of building a healthy relationship with your dog. It's not the eye contact, it's the belief in your dog's mind that you are the one. And that takes time to build. It doesn't happen with treats. Hope that makes sense. Tanya, you no, know, he 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 is uh, my service dog, and he is two and a half year old. So even two and a half year old, yeah, most dogs they want to sniff. Yeah, I the follow up to the sniffing. Uh, Tanya Lambert is saying thank you. You're very welcome. Um, I hope I'm making sense today. Let me know and give it a thumbs up to the video if you're watching, if it's making sense, if you're enjoying this, and if you are benefiting from this uh, live session. Um, we have a few more questions to answer. And I'm gonna try to answer them all. Uh, David Van Roo is saying, I have a puppy 10 weeks old. He has thrown up once today. He ate and played right away. Should I be concerned about this? Is, is it common for puppies to throw up? Yes, definitely as soon as they eat, you shouldn't let them play. You should let them rest. So after, uh, you have to let your puppy uh, rest right after eating. So right after eating, you let the puppy go for a, do, do its business, you know, pee and poo, and then back to sleep. They need to have at least 45 minutes to an hour of rest for the food to start digesting, going, starting the digestion, and then they won't throw up. So that's the reason why it threw up. So, yep, be careful. Uh, Lily 
Lily Cardona is asking, hello, Sarah, I have a puppy four months beagle. Wow, beagle, yes, four months beagle, sweet. How long can you leave your puppy inside of a crate? It depends, you know, some dogs, puppies, they love crate, some don't like it that much, some hate it. Those who love it, they can stay there forever but you shouldn't leave your puppy more than two hours. Every two hours, they have to come out of the crate, go do their business, and then play a little bit and then go back. So that's what I would suggest. Two hours is the maximum can, you can leave a puppy in the crate, unless it's overnight that they're sleeping overnight, then they can stay there overnight. If it's during the day, their system is going and moving every two hours they have to get out of the jail <laughs> right uh, we have dual jane say how to stop puppy biting and when can i stop it completely definitely i suggest you also to watch my video on saturday i'm announcing this video every single time i think it's just a great video, and I think you're going to really love it and enjoy it. Um, but the problem is that um, there is, you know, puppy biting is something that is natural. Uh, it should happen. Uh, they are teething, and it should go up to six months. Most dogs are puppy biting until to uh, six months. Um, so. We expect to have puppy biting going on for next few months. Um, so I'm going to share a video on the uh, chat line as well. It's called puppy biting. So watch that too. So it will help give you a little bit more information. Uh, Tanya Lambert, great information. Thank you very much, sir. You are very welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, Dual Jan Jane says, should I train them with treats or without treats? Definitely without treats. In this channel, we focus on not training dogs with treats. There are so many uh, things can go wrong with treat training. One of them is that you and your dog depend on treats when you treat, use treats to train your dog. The other thing is that it causes a lot of health issues to develop your dog. Dogs are not supposed to be eating constantly, especially when we are training them, they, we are feeding them, so they keep eating. And what if they eating, they're developing health issues because the insulin level, it spikes the insulin level, lots of things happens. I have several videos that I talk about this. And next thing is that it's, it's not what we think that is necessary to use. Instead, we need to use what is natural to a dog. It, treats are not natural for dogs. Play and praise are natural. Every puppy, every dog is born with having the, uh, the joy of play and praise. Which, what dog doesn't love to be petted? What dog doesn't love to be praised? What dog doesn't love to be played? If there is a dog who doesn't like to be praised or played, is because uh, they are uh, emotionally and mentally um, not healthy. So you have to understand that and help them to become healthy. You don't do that by using treats. So I have tons of videos, and in this channel we focus on that not using treats. So I would suggest you not to use treats. Uh, we have Claire Pal Claire Palombo. Palombo. Claire Pal Palombo. I'm so sorry. I have a I have three four months three four months old puppies. Should I train and socialize them all at the same time or each one individually? Definitely individually. Each one of them is an individual, and you have to respect that and give them each individual time to, for you to bond with them. They will bond together throughout the day, but you have to train them individually, separately, so you can bond with the, each one of them. 
Make sense? So take the time to train them separately and individually. And there is also another question. Also, they play fight a lot and sometimes they can be aggressive with each other. Should I allow this or in, in, inter intervene? In most cases, I think, you know, when you watch uh, puppies playing together, dogs playing, it seems they are aggressive. I don't think they are aggressive. I think it just seems like they're aggressive. If they're really aggressive and they're really bothering each other and injuring each other, and they're white, whipping, whimping and crying and screaming and barking, then yes, you have to get in, intervene and separate them, give them break, 10 second break, like a referee, go, and then let them start. And then if you see them going at it and they're doing it's too much, separate them, separate, start. Okay, 10 second break and start. But yes, definitely give them individual attention. Great. I answered all the questions and I hope I didn't miss anybody. Thank you very much. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. Meanwhile, if you have any questions and you're not live, we're not live anymore, feel free to ask your questions in the comments area. I will definitely answer them. Uh, if you could do me a favor and share this channel with all your friends, anybody you know in your uh, networks, please share this video, please share this channel. Uh, watch my video on Saturday for sure and share that video as well. Um, also, meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments area I, regarding anything. I hope you enjoyed this. On this channel, we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, aversive tools like shock collar, prong collars, choke chain collars, without the use of force, domination, or being alpha. Instead, we're going to use play and praise as a reward to train dogs. This year, my goal is to focus on this and give this, spread this message to you dog lovers to help you to become an educated dog lover. Hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe to ch the channel, hit the bell icon as well, so you will get notified as soon as I go live or post my next video. And I thank you so much for being here and I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, have fun with your dog.